Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. In the last episode, we did the impossible and brought Chrono back to life. Well, technically it was more of a retrieval than a revival. What we did was we froze time at the moment before Chrono was annihilated by Lavos, swapped his body out with an exact double of him, and then ran off to the future with the real Chrono, so it was more of an extraction than a resurrection. But we got Chrono back all the same, so now we have all seven playable characters at our disposal. And this marks the point in the game where the linearity of the story pretty much ends. From here on out, it's kind of like the uh, getting the Falcon in Final Fantasy VI. The whole world is basically opened up to us. There are side quests to do, or we could just go and just fight Lavos right now if we so choose. But that's not the best course of action. If we talk to the old man here, wake him up. So, looks like you were successful. No, don't thank me. I didn't do a thing. I just gave you a place to begin. If you really want to thank me, make me a member of your team! Yeah, sure, we can join the- get Gasper the Guru time to join our party, why not? By the way, the Wings of Time has come looking for you. It seems to have a heart and mind of its own. I would have thought that it would be how we got here in the first place, but anyway. You wish to fight Lavos, correct? Many paths lie open to you. You may use that bucket, or fly the Wings of Time to the Day of Lavos. Or there's the Black Omen, which floats in the sky above your world. Lavos is somehow connected with it. It's up to you to decide when and where to fight Lavos. By now you must realize you are the only ones who stand a chance against him. However, you will not be alone. I have had vague glimpses of events, people, and places that will empower you. So now he's going to list off a whole bunch of uh, side quests that we can do. In the Middle Ages, a woman's sheer determination brings a forest back to life. A fugitive in the Middle Ages, Ozzy, maintains an evil hideout. There's a task to be done in the future where machinery originated. And there's a very special stone that can shine its light on each generation, from the distant past to the far future. There's the ghost of a lofty knight slain by Magus in the Middle Ages who haunts the present. There's an object in the Middle Ages that sparkles like a rainbow. One of you is close to someone who needs help. Find this person fast. Just as you touch the lives of every life form you meet, so too will their energy strengthen you. Fail to live up to your potential and you will never win. I am sorry I must simply witness the coming spectacle from my vantage point here. So anyway, there we go. The old man has just listed off a whole bunch of things we can do. I am going to, and if you talk to some of your party members after this point, the characters that are associated with some of these side quests will uh, have comments to say, will give you clues on where to begin these quests. The night spirit which wanders. It can't be. So talking to this frog here will uh, show us a picture of a place that's relevant to that quest. And that is what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to talk to Chrono because he has the least dialogue to say and won't show me pictures of other things. So let's change up our party. I am going to bring in Frog. We need him for this one. I'm going to bring in Luca. Put Magus in the second position here. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to uh, restore my HP and MP. I think I got a weapon for Frog, didn't I? Yeah, we got the Brave Sword on uh, on uh, Death Peak last time. Boost is, uh, has the same effect on uh, enemies as before. It'll boost, uh, do additional damage to magic-based enemies. Let's see, anything else? Shockwave? Uh, yep. She's got the best stuff there, but I need to uh, give uh, give uh, Luca the dash ring because she could use the speed boost a lot more than anyone else. Boost your speed by three. There we go. I think we're set. So let's get to the epoch. Let's get to the chopper. So it's it's so weird having uh, Frog and Magus in the same party. I could just picture if this were an anime. They'd be bickering all the time. But anyway, let's go to the present first. Hi-ho! Epoch! Away! And now we have returned to the present day time. And we've got the Black Mo Omen hovering over Melchior's hut. You'd think he would have built his house in a different place with that thing looming overhead, but maybe he feels a connection to it. we got Medina Village here. We'll worry about that later. And let's see, let me check the map. You press the select button, you can actually see the world map. Yeah, I want to go straight south from here to an entirely new continent we've never experienced before. We never witnessed this place. 
So we may as well explore town a little bit first while we're here. We got the mayor's manor of this town. Got these different people here. Oh, we got some ruins over there and the st structural damage is severe. You gotta watch out for that. And ghosts lurk in the ruins. Okay, good to know. It's been in ruins for ages, apparently. I guess as far as back as the Middle Ages, I suppose. There's a brain-dead ghost hanging out in the ruins. Okay. Scary! Spirits still attached to the real world live in places like that. I guess you wouldn't really call it living so much. Talk to these other people, and oh look, the black omen sparkles in the sun. Tomorrow should be clear too. Okay, everybody's just, you know, the black omens always existed to these people now, so because of the way history changed. So it's like, they don't even, they don't even care, they don't realize that's a bad thing. I don't know how they know what to call it, but... Ah, well, it's the, the minor details. But anyway, this is, uh, this is Chorus. So let's check out the inn. Oh, we got this guy over here. Hey, bring some more soda! Are you sure you're drinking soda? So, I think you've had enough sugar today. Pipe down, I'll tell you when I had enough. Can't you see I love soda pop? Are you sure that's really soda pop? It's not cider, in quotations. Or, you know, maybe you're just hanging out with your buddy Al... Cahal. And no, I have not heard about the ghost. Okay, isn't that a trip? Yeah, I guess that's one way of putting it. Yeah, I've heard about it now. Oh. Well, fine, be that way. Jeez, you people. Kids are just gluttons for fun. I guess that's one way of putting it. The adventurer Toma's grave is on the Western Cape. He only failed to find the rainbow shell. Oh yeah, that's right. Toma was looking for the rainbow shell and he wasted all his money. This guy right here is just a shop. He just sells generic items. Don't really care about it. And there's nothing over here. We're doing all right. So let's go over here and check out this residence since we're in the area. Oh, this is the, uh... Oh, this is the that guy's house, apparently. My husband's never around. I'm gonna show him who's boss next time. Pow! Right in the kisser. So you can go tell his buddy Al, Cahal, Mr. Cahal, that if he loves my husband so much, he can keep him. When I grow up, I'm gonna be a carpenter, just like Daddy. Okay, so the guy's a carpenter, apparently. Wonder why he's not fixing up those ruins, but, eh, whatever. At this point, it's probably a historical site. So let's check out the northern ruins. So we're over here. We got this path over this way. And a hole here. We cannot progress onwards. Nothing in the corner. Just thought I'd check. Just curious. But if we go over here and... Oh, there's, a, there's somebody standing guard. Grrr. And it's time for a boss battle against Cyrus. All right, well, let's go to town on him. But, oh, he missed. Oh, jeez, he must be really evasive. All right, Magus, drop a dark bomb on him. Drop the bomb! And Luca, you may as well take a shot at him. Oh, it did nothing. You must you must be immune to shadow elemental attacks. Luca, you missed too, but I could have sworn it hit. Ow. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. But yeah, you cannot actually do any damage to this guy. So uh, we may as well just wait this out. Or maybe we do have to do another round. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, well. All right, make us go for it. Everybody's missing. Yeah, all physical attacks will miss and all magic elemental attacks will uh, do nothing. My sword hath no effect. Glenn. Wait, what? Cyrus, tis me, Glenn. What? what? Glenn. Okay, well, we can't do anything about that, so I think we're at a at an impasse here in the future, or the present, I should say. So let's go back to 600 AD. And travel, well, yeah, travel back to 600 AD and see about uh, exploring those ruins a little bit more. So let's park the epoch. And let's go into the ruins first before we check out the town. So once again, the uh, path over here is still blocked off, but if we go here, the ghost is not guarding the path anymore, so we can actually go downstairs. And we have different ghost knights to deal with instead. We have sentries. I'm going to have Magus use fire too on these guys. They are susceptible to fire magic above all else. That's why I brought Luca along as well. This might be enough to finish him off. And they have a random chance of doing a, a counterattack. Grudge does a decent amount of damage. 
But we took him out. All right. Some decent amount of experience and tech points there. Got a full leafer. I'm gonna have Frog uh, heal up Magus. I'll just do a cure too. Why not? There we go. Full HP restoration. And we got some more sentries over here. Now you'll see that there's a, a treasure chest over there. Yeah, I, I took made short work of those guys. But anyway, do not open up any tre treasure chests you find in 600 AD because the contents will still be there in 1000 AD. They don't change in this area like they do in like Guardia Castle and some of the early places in the game. But you can get the same item twice if you get the 1000 AD version first. But anyway, let's just go back the way we came. And oh crap. Ah, we're surrounded! Alright, Magus. We'll give these guys some a taste of fire! Set them all ablaze. Okay, they're counterattacking with Grudge. Oh man, if all four of them counterattack with that, that could wipe us out. Oh crap, he's doing MP Buster. Yeah, they also have a chance of doing that. But that's the end of them, and that's the last encounter we can fight during this visit to the Northern Ruins anyway. So, uh, well, we may do it all the same. So let's just get out of here, and we can't really progress forward. We got holes in the floor and whatnot, so we gotta find a way to fix those holes, patch up this place a bit. So let's check out some of the places here in Chorus. We got the Chorus Inn. Well, since I'm here, I may as well uh, stay the night, recover uh, Magus's MP and HP there. So that'll help out. Alright, moving onwards. Lead the way, frog. Check out some of these other places here in Chorus. This old guy, he pretty much says the same thing as the guy in 1000 AD. And there's something eerie about the Northern Ruins. Yep, there certainly is. Apparently that's where we they left Cyrus's body, from what I understand. We got a market over here, nothing special. Sells the exact same things as the guy in 1000 AD, just the generic items. Got resonance here, uh, nothing we care about. That'll be relevant in a, in a moment or two. My tools have been stolen. I can't get any work done now. Okay, so that guy's a carpenter apparently. So we gotta find somebody that they'll be willing to part with their tools. I wish Toma would stay put for a change. Yeah, but he wouldn't be nearly as exciting. Since we're here, hey Toma, how's it going? Hey Frog, I finally got a lead on the rainbow shell. But there's something odd going on. Oh, can you hang on to this for me? Uh, sure. And we got Toma's pop. Yeah, this is like it's like booze in the uh, in the uh, other translations in the original Japanese. But I'll let him explain it. If I don't return, come to my grave and pour this on my headstone. Gee, isn't this morbid? Okay, is that all you had to say? So this is basically a key towards another side quest we'll be doing another episode, but I figured since we're here, we may as well get it now. So, ten years ago, a beast was seen carrying something into the Northern Ruins. Treasure, perhaps? I don't know, be my guest, try to figure that out. But anyway, so we got Tomo's Pop, we'll just hang on to that for later. It'll be relevant soon enough. So now we have to return to 1000 AD and find ourselves some tools. I think I know just the guy that will be willing to part with his to make this work for us. I think we're creating some kind of a paradox in this case though. But anyway, let's park the, uh, I was about to say airship, but let's, let's park the epoch. Talk to this guy. You wanna borrow my tools? Be my guest, I'm busy here, so go get them for my wife. Like, okay buddy. Well, time travel's not going to fix that problem, unfortunately, but let's go to this guy's house. My husband's never- oh, he says it. She's saying the same thing. You tell Mr. Cahal- he already said that. What? His tools? Oh, hold on, they're right here. It's not like that lazy bum's going to ever use them anyway. It's alright. And we got the tools! I wonder just how advanced they are compared to in 600 AD, but... Whatever, we got tools, so let's go back to the past. And give them to that carpenter guy. So back to the Middle Ages we go! If we try doing anything in the Northern Ruins again, Cyrus's ghost will still be blocking the way. So let's park. Go to the cafe, and talk to this guy. Oh, Toma's gone, because we got his pop. You've got some tools there! 
Will you lend them to a buddy? Yeah, sure, buddy. Why not? Thanks a lot. Now I can get to work. And off he goes. And what does this guy have to say? Yep, Toma's off to find the rainbow shell. So yeah, when the, we get to the point we're going to do the rainbow shell side quest, we'll have to worry about Toma's pop then. Now let's go to this residence. This is where the uh, carpenter guy lives. Thanks for lending me those tools. Now I can finally get to work. I guess I'll start with the ruins. Hey, yeah, sure. Come on, you lazy blokes. Whatever you say, boss. And he's got his apprentices up there. Yeah, if you went upstairs, you could talk to them, but they don't say anything really interesting. Just, like, just talking about work, basically. So let's head over to the ruins now and see what's changed, if anything. We're done for now. We can't repair the spots where the monsters hide. Call us after you get rid of them. We'll do the rest. Come on, you lazy blokes. Whatever you say, boss. So off they go. Now, he did not repair the hole in the floor down here, but I just want to check to make sure the monsters are gone. Okay, yeah, the sentries are still gone, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. But we can go this way now. And the hole in the floor here has been patched up, so we can go through this door. And we got some skeletons up here, so we'll have to watch out for this stuff. So, all right, we have some new enemies. We've got Reapers and Defunct. So basically, I'm going to have Luca and Magus cast Fire 2. One of them alone is, isn't going to be enough to wipe these guys out, but they're all weak to fire compared to other elements. It's probably not that big of a difference, really, but it does the trick all the same. So this should finish them all off. Yeah, there's nothing really particular special about them, so don't worry too much. Just set them ablaze and they'll clear out. Frog leveled up, and so did Magus. And Magus learned Magic Wall. All right. It's basically like casting Shell in the Final Fantasy game. Boosts your magic defense, I think, by 50%. It doesn't say, but something like that. But anyway, his next spell to learn is Dark Mist. It's pretty good. It's a shadow elemental attack that hits all enemies, not just an area like with uh, Dark Bomb. So I'll take that. And speaking of taking things, I'll take these guys out. All right, we made short work of them. And up this door, we have another dead end we can't do anything about yet, so we'll just leave that be for now. And we have another monster over here to take care of. All right, Luca leveled up after that battle, and that clears out the last monsters in this area right now. So now what we do is we return to the carpenters and tell them, hey, we cleared out some monsters for you. Yeah, the first time you give them the tools, they always patch up that one particular hole, whether or not you clear out the, uh, the sentries earlier or not. But in order to get them to uh, repair the hole down there, you do have to defeat the, centri the sentries. I almost called them centuries. But yeah, if we want to keep repairing the northern ruins, ruins, we have to pay them 2,000 G each time. So let's do it. We got money to, we got money to burn. So off they go yet again. We'll have to do that at least one more time, though, to get all the way through the ruins, but this is the most important part of it, I would say. It's the part most relevant to the side quest, at any rate. So they're done for now, and they can't repair spots where monsters hide, so we have to play Exterminator, basically, and wipe out the, the ghosts. I was about to make a religious reference, but maybe it's not the best thing to joke about. But anyway, if we go down here now... The hole blocking this room has been cleared. And once again, do not open up this chest unless you're in 1000 AD first. And up here we have another room and a tombstone, okay. Cyrus, the fool who challenged Magus rests here. And here we are. Glenn has finally found the tomb of his best friend. Cyrus, I have returned. I shall honor my promise to thee. Draws the Masamune. Wait, what's going on? Something's happening. Oh! Well, I guess we've already been fighting some ghosts before, so I guess we shouldn't be too surprised to see Cyrus. Cyrus! Glenn. Thank you for making the journey here. Dear Cyrus, thou must think ill of me. 
On the contrary, you have come far, my friend. When Megus defeated me, I thought of all those whom I, I had left behind. King Guardia, Queen Lien, and of course, you. Cyrus. Your skill and dedication is superior. I can rest now, knowing that everyone is in good hands. Goodbye, my friend. Cyrus, wait. I... I... I love you. No, no. Just ruin the moment. The Queen. Look after Queen Lien. Alas, and farewell, Glenn. Cyrus! What am I fighting for? Nah. I'm so sorry, Cyrus. Eh? Wait, what's going on here? The Masamune! <laughs> I like how uh, Magus is uh, shielding himself of his cape when the Masamune starts flashing. Thinks that that's a cursed sword. <laughs> That's it! Wait, what? Ah, crap, it's Masa and Mune, they separated. What'd you have done with my weapon? That was special! Quite! I guess it means that a hero's power comes with- comes from within. Mucho metaphysical, man! <laughs> like mind over matter, Mune. My mind? Now for a yummy full-on test. It's fresh in time. Fusion ha! And they have returned into the form of the Masamune. And tis flowing with strength and vigor. Ah, tis the true identity of the Masamune. So the Masamune has been powered up. Cyrus, I promise to fulfill your wishes. Tis a sad farewell. Onward all. So now, Frog has upgraded the Masamune. It is considerably more powerful than the Brave Sword and it also carries over the double damage to all magic based enemies the last couple swords he's had, has had. So let's equip the Masamune. If you really want to, you can give him the Hero's Medal to up his critical hit rate. That still applies as well. It's really nice. So the Masamune has now become the most powerful sword for Frog in the game. So now it's time to return to... Well, the Carpenters again to repair more of the ruins because I'm just going to tell you right now, they did not do the room that we cleared out the last visit. So let's go and put down another 2,000 G on patching up the place one more time. Yes, I do want to repair the Northern Ruins. So let's get these guys on the road. So onwards! And you also notice that if you approach the... The characters around the town have changed their dialogue now. And over here we have the Hero's Grave. They even changed the name of the location. Hi Cyrus is resting in peace now. And that's all that they're going to be able to do, so we don't need to call on the carpenters anymore. So let's go over this way to the final areas of the of the dungeon here. But yeah, Cyrus is now resting in peace. So yeah, all the holes in the floor are gone. Over this way, we have a chest. Do not open this. But like I said before, the contents will be the exact same in the future, or 1000 AD as they are here in 600 AD. But over here, you'll notice that there are also some of these black mysterious uh, box sealed boxes that you need the pendant to open. And like when we got the uh, different colored uh, males for elemental resistances and absorption and whatnot, you can have the pendant react with the boxes before uh, deciding whether or not to open them. You want to make sure you leave them closed, but have the pendant react. Yeah, nothing special there, just some reapers. Just carry on. But over here, we have a new enemy. We have the base. All your base are belong to us. And it's basically the same strategy, just nuke them with fire. They have about, they have really high defense. 
You'll notice you know, Luca's magic is only doing about 30, 38 to 40 some damage, and they will counterattack. At least, or at least they have a chance of counterattacking. But a follow up with uh, Magus on Fire 2 should finish everybody off. Yep, there goes the bases. They're nothing too special. The counterattack is just the most annoying thing about them. So if you're quick on the draw, there's nothing to worry about. But we do have to fight some more of them. Alright, made short work of them. They didn't even counterattack that time. So we have two more of these special boxes. So this one's reacting to the pendant. Let's not take out the contents. And just like with this one, do the same thing. No, I'd rather not. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to meet you guys back in the present day. And we're going to enter the ruins and salvage some treasure. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. Alright, we're back at the hero's grave, only now we're in 1000 AD. So first, let's go and visit Cyrus's grave now. There's a little bit of treasure here to get. So over here, let's open up this box. And we got a Hyper Aether. Now once again, there'll be a Hyper Aether in 600 AD as well, but if you open that chest first, this one will be uh, open already and we won't be able to get the item twice. Yeah, I know it's kind of a paradox there, but it's... You know, in Chrono Trigger and games like this, you know, once an item is in your inventory, it bypasses the laws of time and space. Oh, I see something sparkly. And we got a magic tab. I'll give that to Robo when I see him next. And here, I don't think I actually read the, the tombstone now, but the text even changed after Cyrus has been put to rest. So Cyrus sleeps here, avenged by his friend Glenn. Sort of like that. And Magus is just standing over his shoulders like, What do you mean, avenged? I'm still here. Well, I guess we are in 1000 AD, so who knows what could happen in the next 400 years. So let's check out the other side. All the monsters are completely gone. This place is completely clear. Now it's easy to miss this, but if you go down here to this corner here, you get a power tab. I'm going to give that probably to Ayla. Somebody that focuses more on physical attacks than magic. Those tabs are not in 600 AD, so don't even bother looking for them again. In this chest, we get an elixir, and again, this will be a, an elixir in 600 AD as well, so it's the same thing regardless. And over here, let's check out this box. This one's a pretty good one. So the Nova armor has leveled up, and we get moon armor, which is basically, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, it's the strongest armor in the game for pure defensive purposes, and it boosts your magic defense stat by uh, 10 points. Pretty nice. It is pretty nice. I actually like the Nova Armor more because that one protects your status from all status ailments. Makes you immune to blind and poison and all that stuff. Chaos. The whole shebang. So I honestly prefer the Nova Armor, but I'll take the Moon Armor all the same as well. And here we got a couple more chests. Open these bad boys. In this chest, the Kali Blade has leveled up, and we get the Shiva Edge, which is basically the second most powerful sword in the game for Chrono. It has a, uh, when you do critical attack, critical attacks, what? I don't know what that was about. Critical attacks with the Shiva Edge. Chrono will do four times the amount of damage instead of double damage like normal critical hits do. It's pretty good. And in this chest... The Siren has leveled up, and we get the Valkyrie, which is the strongest crossbow for Marley in the game. This is relative just for the Super Nintendo version. There are stronger stuff in, like, the DS release, and I think iOS probably too as well. Any of the more recent Chrono Trigger releases with the redone translation and all that stuff. You know, there's stronger stuff then. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up things for today's episode. I'll get all the stuff in 600 AD off screen since we already know all the contents. I don't need to show that on screen. You know, it's the Sheev, you know, it's the Kali Blade, it's the Siren, it's the Nova Armor. I'll do that stuff off screen and next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger, you know, the old man did mention that a certain fugitive had a base here in the 600 AD. Maybe we should go and check that out. But alright guys, this has been Phoenix Down and I will see you next time.